Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. My name is Jed Lee, and this is a special edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. Today, we're going to be talking to Adina Oberman. She's going to be telling us how we can talk to our young kids about COVID-19 and about the quarantine and about everything that's going on right now. Adina is the driving force behind a, a wonderful blog called Big Books for Little Hands. We hope, and I'm sure you're going to find this information to be very, very helpful. Joining us on the line right now is the driving force behind a, a really, really important blog. It's called Big Books for Little Hands. Please welcome to the show, Adina Oberman. Adina, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm 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 good, but I'm a little scared. This is kind of like day. I'm not exactly sure what day it is because the quarantine that that everybody is experiencing right now in the United States it it keeps changing. You know, uh, a couple of days ago it was don't be in a crowd of over 250 people, and now it's don't be in a crowd of 25. And I think I heard somebody say don't be in a crowd of more than 10 people. So we're 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 in this this time where everybody's of of is rightly uh, concerned uh, about the uh, COVID-19 virus. You're yeah. in you're in the one of the hot spots in in the world right now. You're in the um, uh, Westchester County area, and uh, the city of New Rochelle is uh, on complete lockdown, I guess. You know, there are so many cases there. Uh, I, I'm really excited that you're on because y- you've written a number of books. Your, your blog is all about recommending uh, books for parents that they can use to start some great conversations. And I'm really happy that you've written extensively about how we can talk to our kids about health and safety. And so I really appreciate you coming on tonight to, you know, maybe share some ideas and some books of of how we can talk to our kids up about this current virus and, and and about how we can keep ourselves safe. Yes, absolutely. It's such an important topic right now for everyone. Um, I know that parents are specifically concerned because they're not only trying to take care of themselves, they're trying to keep their children, their families safe. So it's so important to talk about health and safety with your kids in ways that they can understand. And using books are always so helpful when you're talking about tough topics and navigating those tough questions that come up. Um, There are a lot of really great books that can help you with those conversations. You know, before we get into the specific books, I, I'm imagining now you're you, you're a preschool teacher, yes, and you've been doing that for a, a long time. You have a master's in early childhood education. I imagine that a lot of the families that you serve are, are facing a real dilemma because it, 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 a lot of your families, like my family, was when my kids were in preschool and kindergarten age. Not only were we caring for them. We're also caring for my mom and my father-in-law, uh, who at the time, thankfully, they they were very healthy. But I'm imagining right now, right now, there are a lot of families that have a close relationship with a grandmother, with a grandfather, who suddenly, gee, it, it's not safe for us to go over and see uh, Nana and Grandpa right now because we might make them sick. And I imagine that could be an incredibly difficult thing for a child to understand. Absolutely. My children are actually experiencing that right now with both of their grandmothers. Um, they're both thank- thankfully very healthy right now, and we're hoping to keep them that way. But we're doing the social distancing with them, unfortunately, because we just want to keep everybody safe. I've definitely had to answer a lot of questions about why we're not seeing grandma. And I know that so many, like you said, so many other families are um, working through that as well. So what are what are some of the questions that you've been asked and, and, and how have you answered them? One of the biggest questions I've been asked is just the simple, what can I tell my children? How do I explain this to my child? Because it, it's such a complicated topic. And as you know, children in these early years, these early childhood years up to from birth to grade two, they can only really comprehend tangible things, things that they can see and touch and experience. And the concept of so many people in our community being sick and germs not being visible is very difficult to explain. So what I tell people is to keep it very simple and very basic. Tell your children 
that there are a lot of people who are sick and we want to be extra careful so that they don't get sick. And you can say, for example, school is closed this week and it's going to reopen again when everyone is healthy and everyone's feeling better. Um, but for now, we're just staying home. We're washing our hands a lot. And then stop and see what questions come up. I find that with these big topics, what often happens is we as adults and parents and teachers tend to start trying to answer big questions and the questions and thoughts that are in our heads. And often with children, they don't, they don't have the same life experiences that we do. And so they may not be wondering any of the questions that you're thinking about. Um, so start with just the questions that they ask. They may simply be asking you, oh, when are we going to my friend's birthday party? When's the next time we're going to be going to the playground? How come you're going to the grocery store by yourself? Um, answering those questions satisfy that need. Uh, it satisfies that need that of, the, of the questions that they're answering, and it helps put them at ease, and it also saves you from trying to explain these bigger, more abstract concepts that are tougher for them to understand. I think that that's so very, very important. It's, and I do. I remember, you know, a couple of decades ago when my kids were that age, that, yeah, there, a lot of times they would come and they would ask a question and I would just kind of go overboard and try to explain everything. And it's like, not that. I just wanted to, you know. Right. <laughs> if the first right. sentence answered my question, you could have ended then. Right. And they – they, their, their heads are very often in a different place. They may have fears and worries and anxieties just like we do, but they're, they're, you don't know sometimes kind of where those thoughts are. And just by talking to them, letting them give you their input and feedback and answering questions can really sort of help you figure out where, where they are. I always like to say with kids, we should try our best when we can to listen more than we talk and they may ask you one question be satisfied with the answer and then not bring it up for a week or a month or till next year mm -hmm. and or they may ask tons of questions all day long it really just depends and the best thing that you can do is answer those questions when they come up um, in as calm and honest a way as possible so that they understand that you're available to answer these questions and that you're there to support them um, and that it's okay to feel however they're feeling. Um, and like I said, like you, and they have you as a support system. That's, yeah, I, that's so very important. And I love that advice. Listen more than you speak. We, we talk, we talk on the podcast so much about how, how important it is and how empowering it is when we're sitting down and we're reading a book with our kids and we just do something simple, like look at a picture and say, what do you think is going on? Right. You know, that that question, showing the kid that you're interested in them and, and what they think is so empowering to, to those kids. And that's great advice for right now because, yeah, there's a, there, there are a lot of things that our kids will tell us uh, if, if we just stay quiet enough to listen. Absolutely. And it also will give you a sense of where they are emotionally. If they're asking a lot of questions and, and appearing very nervous, you can see that where their emotional state is. If they're sort of casually asking you one, maybe two questions, and then they move on to a completely different topic, it, you know, it shows you that they are curious, but they're not in any kind of fragile emotional state. And sometimes just knowing that your child is okay and is not as panicked as you are really helps you um, as a parent and as a teacher to sort of come back to earth and, and sort of refocus and, and relieve some of that burden of stress because I, we are all stressed right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and just having that little bit of weight off your shoulders, knowing that your child has, you know, is okay emotionally. Um, that can be a big help. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's probably our biggest priority right now is to not stress our kids out any more than they may already be. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's hard. It's hard because you're, you know, you're trying to communicate with people and stay connected to the world and give them your attention. And, and many people are working from home now. So there's a lot on people's plates right now. And, um, you know, we want to help our kids as much as we can. 
And I imagine, too, it must be, you know, again, I'm thinking back to when my son was four and five and six years old. And, you know, if if I had to worry about him touching, not touching his face, I think I would have had a, 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 a heart attack because, I mean, it was touching and putting in, inserting. And, you know, it's like, dude, what do you do? Uh, yeah, well, how do we deal with something as, as simple as that without kind of freaking out on the kids, you know, because tip, your kids aren't thinking about that and they're touching things and touching their face and touching yeah. their nose and, you know, whatever. Uh, and, and we want our kids not to do that. But at the same time, we don't want to freak them out. We, we don't want to flip out on them. We don't want to let our anxieties uh, cause us to overreact. Well, that's a, a really great, great point. And a, um, one way that I like to talk to um, the students in my classes, and one thing I like to also tell parents is that the best thing that you can do when you're trying to give children any kind of instruction is to speak to them in the form of a positive as opposed to a negative. So instead of saying, don't put your fingers in your nose, don't put your fingers in your mouth, you can say, hands down, please, um, hands in your pockets, or give them something to hold in their hands, distract them with an activity that, that is safe for them to be handling. When we talk to kids in the negative by saying, don't touch that, don't put your fingers in your mouth, um, their little brains have to work backwards. And just that extra step is enough to sort of throw them off at this age. Um, it just, it, it's, it's clearer. They really just need clarity and it helps them sort of know what's expected of them. So that, that is one thing that can really help. Obviously nothing is perfect. Um, I have an 18 month old toddler whose hands are on everything all the time. So you know, I think a big part of what's going on right now is parents and teachers need to do their best and acknowledge that nothing is going to be perfect. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's fascinating. I never, you know, I always I'm typically tend to be a positive person, but I never realized that there is a, a, a real sound reasoning behind that, that kids respond better to, hey, hey, why don't you hold on to this pen with two of your hands for right, right now? Or why don't right. you put your hands in your pocket right now instead of like, don't touch your face? Right. Or give them a job. If you're out and about, um, this is a, 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 you know something that happens to me all the time. When I'm out and about, you know, I'll, I'll give my kids uh, a job. Can you can you play I Spy, something to just keep their minds and busy, and they will be less focused on touching. How have you addressed the, the whole issue of social distancing and, and uh, helping kids understand now is not the time to hug our friends? I, I know typically we love that, and that's a really great thing usually, but right now, not so much. Right, absolutely. It's very difficult because kids at this age – uh, especially typically developing kids are so social. Um, a lot of it is just reminders in as gentle a way as we possibly can. Um, just reminding kids, you know, we'll see our friends again when everybody's feeling better, when schools are open again. Um, for me, I find that it's been easier to keep my family as home as much as possible. We're FaceTiming cousins and relatives and friends um, and just not putting ourselves in a situation where, we are, you know, where I'm having to pull them back. Um, for example, we took a walk around our neighborhood today and, um, there was a crowd of children on the other side of my neighborhood and I, um, you know, they were having a great time, but I, I know my kids, I know that they, um, would have a really tough time for me pulling them back. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, unfortunately, even though I really wanted to go over, I just avoided the situation. So, um, like I said, right now, nothing is perfect, but you just try to be as clear and um, and calm and gentle as you possibly can and try to offer um, alternatives. So FaceTiming and Skype with um, with cousins and friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, in a bit, I'm, I'm going to ask you about some books we could read with our kids to, to kind of help us through this, but... One of the things that uh, I, I just saw a, about uh, a, about an hour ago, one of my friends who's a teacher posted a meme, and the meme said something like, uh, uh, I just finished homeschooling my, my daughter and my son for 45 minutes. Teachers deserve a million dollars a week. <laughs> so I, I agree. <laughs> and, well, I absolutely agree. So, uh, uh, there are 
there are going to be a lot of parents, you know, right now for two or three weeks here in Boston. School is going to be out for six weeks uh, that are going to be facing this, uh, you know, not challenge of we're expected to kind of homeschool these kids or entertain these kids all day long. I've never done that. What kind of advice can can you give to parents so that they don't freak out and, and become overwhelmed? That's such a great question. It's, it's one that I'm facing as well, and, and so many of um, our friends are. The one thing that I would say is, um, well, the most important thing that I would say is remember that your job is to be a parent first mm. and give yourself um, a break. Try to keep it as real as you possibly can. If you're a teacher and you're home with your children, wonderful. If you have the ability to teach them and come up with interesting activities, go for it. Um, but like I said, nothing is going to be perfect. We have to make peace with the fact that there's this is not going to be school. There may not be as much book learning as possible um, as, as they normally would. There's going to be more screen time. Um, you know, just tr- basically just do your best. Every day is not going to go perfectly. Um and remember that if you're home with your kids and you're not a teacher, then you're not a teacher and you don't have to necessarily institute a homeschool in your home during this time. Um, I, you know, I work with preschoolers. I've worked with toddlers and threes, fours, five year olds. And at this age, so much of the learning that's going on is through play and through experiences. So while it's certainly helpful to have children practicing, um, writing letters and numbers and, and, and practice pre-reading skills, they will learn so much more through you sitting down and playing with them through, um, having an art experience with them, with cooking and talking about measurement and, um, letting them stir the batter, um, getting their hands in some mushy slime that you made, Outside in your backyard, those are the learning experiences that children really absorb and they get the most out of. Um, those are the things that I, I feel like we should be encouraging parents to do so that they don't feel like they are now a parent. They're holding down their regular job and now all of a sudden they're a completely unprepared teacher. Um, so, you know, if you read with, read with your child as much as you can, um, you know, have a dance party in, in your pajamas. Um, you know, those, those are the kinds of experiences where they're going to learn. And, um, I saw, I saw a meme, like, kind of like you mentioned that, uh, recently that, um, try to keep in mind that you and your family can look back at this time as a time when you were stuck at home and you had some real fun experiences. And, and time to stay in your pajamas, time to stay up late and watch a movie, time to make hot cocoa in the middle of the day, you know, time to make something messy or, or, or do a big, a big art project as opposed to looking back at it as a time where, where parents felt like they had to be teachers and, and disciplinarians and sort of trying to make this into, um, a family, an extended family, um, experience as opposed to, well, now it's school time and that's, and I'm a job as a teacher. You know, I, if we were allowed to be in, in a crowd of people, I would stand up and give you a standing ovation for that (laughs) because it's so true. You know, the book learning, it's, it's going to come. And, you know, we've talked a lot about, you know, kids who uh, are read to at two and three and four years old, you know, get to school with such a big lead over the kids who don't, you know, have that. And there are, there are ways to mitigate that. But, you know, the one thing that the, that the kids who are read to on a regular basis, the one thing that they get is they get the sense that the most important person in the world to them is spending time with them and loves them. Yes. And that's such an important lesson. And at, at, at this time, as the you know, a lot of people around us are going uh, a little bit crazy and panicking. At, at this time, if your kids can see that that you're calm, and that your choice is to be with them, and and to love them, to just love them, and to get muddy, and to 
get yeah. our, you know, get the finger paint all over yourself and get, like my son did when he was five, the chocolate pudding out. And at one point it was so messy. I said, give me some of that. I'm going to get myself <laughs> dirty. Those are the things that you remember. You, you will remember that for the rest of your life and so will he. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, lo- I love that. Yes, I, it, I, I guess if there's one thing that we should take away from this is, you know, while we're talking to our kids about, uh, you know, staying safe and social distancing and, and saying, you know, singing happy birthday to you eight times while you're washing your hands, <laughs> everything that we do should, should be communi- communicating to our kids that we love them and that yeah. things are going to be okay. Yes. And one other thing I just want to add is that um, children sometimes internalize external situations and sometimes children perceive that um, things that are happening outside of themselves are somehow their fault. Mm. And so if there's ever any kind of um, major life change, major milestone, it's always good when you're having these conversations to reassure your child that, none of this is happening because of anything that they did, that this is in no way their fault. It's just something that's happening um, in our community right now. It's kind of beyond our control and that um, nothing they did contributed to the situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I think this is so, so very, very important. Now I, I promised that I'd asked you uh, about some recommendations for books that, that we might be able to read that can really help us uh to have some conversations uh, about health and keeping ourselves healthy uh, at this time. Yes. So one of my favorites is called Germs Are Not For Sharing by Elizabeth Burdick. There is um, there's a board book version, there's a paperback version, and there's also an English-Spanish dual language version. Um, this book is great. These are a part of a – they're called the Best Behavior Series. And – I love these books because they're clear, the illustrations are engaging, um, and they give lots of information without being overly wordy, which is so great for kids because their attention spans can be somewhat limited. Um, I love these books also because they feature children from various different ethnic backgrounds in the illustrations. So not only are you getting some great information about health and hand washing and where germs come from and um, great hygiene habits, but you're also viewing children that are just like the readers of the books. So those are, those are fantastic books. They're ones that I read every year in my classroom. Um, the same series also has a book called Noses Are Not For Picking. <laughs> so if you have a child in your life, um, like me, you probably would love to have that book on hand anyway. Um, you know, it talks about same thing, um, good hygiene habits, using a tissue, discusses germs. Um, I love that these books come in different versions because if you have a toddler or a two year old, you can get the board book version and not worry about it being destroyed. But if you have an older child who might think that a board book is a little too babyish, mm-hmm. you go with the paperback version and it's a little wordier and still gives great information. So those are, those are my favorites. There's also a really fun book for kids who are a bit older. I would say three year olds and up and it's called Do Not Lick This Book <laughs> by Idan Ben Barak. And, um, it's a little more sciencey. It talks about different kinds of germs and bacteria. And there are um, pictures of what these different kinds of germs and bacteria look like under a microscope, but it, they're also paired with real, with photos of where these um, germs and bacteria show up. And it's sort of an interesting mix of information about good hygiene habits and also science. So if you have an older child, especially one who's super interested in science um, and super curious, uh, these books, can, this book can be super engaging. I, and, and kids, I, we, we have our, our queen of, of, uh, uh, of yucky science, Heather Montgomery, come on the show very often. And she just loves, you know, introducing kids to um, science through things like roadkill <laughs> and, and but but kids you love that and there are some kids that are 
you know, would, would just, you know, the idea of learning just turns them off, but the idea of, of yuck <laughs> just, yeah. just ignites their imagination. And what a great way to combine the two. Like, oh, you, you love gross stuff? Come on over here, kid. Let's, let's look <laughs> at some gross things. Yes, the grosser, the better. <laughs> Adina, this has been so, so very helpful, and I think it's really a, a, a great service. I, I know there's a lot of great things that, that folks can find on your blog, so uh, just give us, a, and, and I want you to come back on in the future to talk, you know, get a little bit more in depth of, about your blog, but tell us a little bit about where we can find, and give us the kind of elevator pitch uh, about your blog. Sure. So my website is called Big Books for Little Hands. You can find me at bigbooksforlittlehands.com. And my aim is always to just help parents and teachers navigate different topics with their children that are particularly difficult. Um, like I said at the beginning, uh, a good book and um, a real meaningful conversation can really make a huge difference when you're dealing with a very difficult time in your life. So um, I've written about books that are helpful when you're dealing with uh, the bad dreams and, and not wanting to go to bed. There are great books about dealing with tantrums. There are some awesome resources on my site for parents who are potty training. Such a challenging topic that every parent goes through. Everyone can use some good books and a little bit of advice. Um, I also have books about um, body positivity, interactive books. I recently wrote a post about children and families who are navigating issues of gender identity. This is a topic that's so important that children are um, and parents are coming and asking for a lot of help with recently. Mm -hmm. um, dealing with divorce, uh, grief. Unfortunately, so many of us have, like you said, um, aging relatives mm -hmm. and and visiting, um, losing a relative can be so difficult for a young child and so overwhelming to talk about. Um, so, so many people say to me, oh my God, I didn't know that there were books about death for children. And, you know, you wouldn't even think of, of that if you, um, you kind of were just browsing in a bookstore, mm -hmm. but there are some really, really helpful books, um, you mentioned grandparents. I, I wrote an, um, a post recently about a grandparents and how do we navigate questions of aging and illness and, um, and memory loss. And there are some fantastic resources on my site to help you work through this topic with your children. Um, I love when people reach out and tell me the topics that they're dealing with because I always like to help real parents real teachers dealing with real life challenges. So um, please visit my website, bigbooksforlittlehands.com. And if you do not see a topic that you need help with, please email me and let me know because I would love to write posts for people who, um, who could use a little help because we could all use a little help sometimes as parents. Um, you can email me at bigbooksforlittlehands at gmail.com. I also have an Instagram account, which is the letters B B L hands. And that's where I post updates, new books that I have found at the library that are particularly helpful. Um, new topics that I'm working on people, um, authors and publishers that I've connected with. So you know what's coming. And that's also a great place to reach out and say, Hey, you know, this issue came up. Do you have any book recommendations? So follow up, follow me on Instagram to get the most up to date information. Well, this has been such uh, uh, an eye opening and really helpful conversation, and I want to thank the driving force behind Big Books for Little Hands, Adina Oberman. Adina, thanks so so very much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, and stay safe, stay healthy. Please join us for our next regularly scheduled edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We hope that you found this podcast to be helpful and give you some ideas on how you can talk about the uh, COVID-19 virus with your kids, about how to talk to them about staying healthy, how to keep yourself health, healthy and sane during this time. It's a really scary time for a lot of folks. We can get through it together. 
So I really, I'm, I'm really appreciative that for Dean. I'm really thankful that she came on today. Please check out her blog, Big Books for Little Hands. I'm also really thankful for the members of my team that helped me make this show happen every every episode. I want to thank my amazing producer, Fatima Khan. I want to thank my author, Ambassador Peggy Cotto. Of course, I want to thank my beautiful wife for all that she does. But most of all, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you so much for, for, for keeping calm during this really kind of scary time. Thank you so much for supporting each other. And thank you so very, very much for making the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. <laughs>